Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 61, I'm going to introduce my new YouTube channel, Melotone Kits. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. I'm thrilled to announce a new YouTube channel is born. It's called Melotone Kits. In a Melotone is a way to describe the mood of a tune. I first heard the expression when the great Dizzy Gillespie introduced the tune he was about to play. In a Melotone. Now, there's a, a wonderful album by the Duke called Blues in Orbit. And on that album is also a tune uh, that that the Duke wrote called In a Mellow Tone. In fact, I highly recommend the album. It it just, it pops from the first track to the last track and the recording quality is absolutely excellent. In fact, the, the recording itself is uh, fascinating. Um, the Duke and his band normally played two sets in an evening. Can you imagine that? He did two concerts in an evening. And they normally did that seven days a week unless they were on the road. And the only time that they could record was after. <laughs> so the, uh, they, were, they were in New York. They did their show. They, came, they got to the studio around midnight. I think this is Capitol Records in, in New York. And, um, and the Duke had, um, had, his, had his evening meal at midnight. And then the band got to work. And by 6 o'clock in the morning, I believe, they had this wonderful album done. It was finished. One, <laughs> one overnight job. <laughs> I presume everybody went out for a breakfast and off to bed. Luckily, I don't think they did any afternoon shows, so they probably didn't have to start showing up uh, at, their, at their venue until maybe 6 o'clock or something like that. But what a life, eh? Anyways, the first videos are already up. Basically, it's a channel devoted to the kit amp builds. Starting with the URI monoblocks. If you are interested in buying one of our kit amps, or are interested to see how custom tube amplifiers are put together, just subscribe and follow along. I'll put a link below. I'm making a new build video almost every day, and as soon as I'm done build number one, that's right, I'm building the first one. I'll be shipping all the current orders to test builders. I'm hoping to be done by the end of next week. Soldering while watching the monitor to make sure I'm on screen isn't the easiest thing to do. A big thank you to my partner Charles who's editing the videos. Let's see what we finished so far. Well, we've got the plinth completely done and hopefully everybody has got it finished. I didn't I just finished the sample on, on camera. Um, the plinth itself, which is just basically the box or case that the amplifier sits in, is made out of cherry. And it's actually nicknamed black cherry. And that's because this beautiful dark wood uh, ages and darkens and deepens in color as time goes on. And some of the most sought after antiques are 100 and 200 year old fine pieces of furniture because the color is, and the luster is, and the patina is just out of this world. Let's take a quick look inside. It's just very simple. There's a rebate along here for the top plate, which is nice and heavy. Some corner blocks so that we can screw through, and that's all there is to it. There's a cutout in the back for the IEC and a couple of holes for the speaker um, terminals. And the plates, the plates are my pride and joy. I started building custom tube, tube gear using heavy plates and I loved it so much I thought the kit amp should have this kind of quality. Look at the thickness of this. It's just amazing. Now you might think it's overkill and it is. A, a, quite a bit of stuff in my design work is overkill and the reason for that is I'm aiming for higher quality, better sound, best sound, um, lovely looking um, amplifiers. This top plate is made in aluminum 
which has some wonderful properties. One, it machines very nicely. I can do stuff like this quite easily. And then now we are working on setting up a CNC. Um, it'll be perfect for the CNC. Um, two, it allows us to do a lovely brushed finish like this. And it takes a nice, um, a, basically a hand buffed wax surface really nicely. And lastly, it's a great ground plane because all of our ground returns, here's one right here, I think. Where is it? It's around here. There it is. Bolts up to the plate and that's our ground return, right? It completes our circuit. Anyways, so those, we've, we've got the flints done and we've got the power supply boards done. Have a look at this. The PCBs are really heavy. They're actually the heaviest that I can get made. The traces are the same thing. They're extra thick, extra wide, nice big pads. The boards themselves are dual-sided boards. Now, for the Yuri monoblock, we're only working on side B. But for the preamps, in which they have dual power supplies, they're dual mono designs, I wanted the, um, the boards to be able to, let me orient it, I wanted the boards to be able to have all of the main connections coming up the middle, which meant here they are right here. One is the choke and one is the, the main filter cap, which meant I needed a mirror. So Charles designed the board to do this. Watch this. See that? So they sit beside each other <clears throat> and they're perfect mirrors. So you can put your components through one side or the other. And it's the same thing, basically. Neat, huh? Anyways, there's not a lot to the, the actual boards. The circuitry is very simple. Some components don't go on for the URI because we have a center tap on the power transformer, so we only need two diodes to make a full wave rectification. But these are universal power supply boards, so they can handle all sorts of, um, of different kits, including the preamps, of course. So those are done, and we're getting we're getting close. Uh, over the weekend, we're going to have builds that show the um, the the transformers mounted on the top plate. In fact, the whole top plate is going to get assembled, and then on Monday or so, we're going to start actual actual wiring of the various circuits. Now, the video series is being done in segments, and we're just doing. A module. So in one module we did the power supply, another module we put together the plinth, etc. You get the idea. The Id the the thinking behind that is that um, builders of the kits will be able to just do one section at a time. So if they have an, an evening, an hour or two free in an evening, they can focus and do one thing and do it well. Okay, let's take a look and see what came in this week. Well, a whole bunch of tools. Now, you might think, what is Valves and More bringing in tools for? Well, uh, if you've explored the store at all, you know that I carry a lot of components, and I do have a section for tools. And now that we've got uh, kit amps coming out, I thought I'm going to put in the store things that are not easy to find necessarily, certainly not at a hardware store. So a fine set of needle nose pliers are absolutely critical. And it took me a long time to find a nice pair. I was actually hoping to find the pair I have, but I found something close and these are lovely and they're not expensive. And a set of side cutters with very fine nibs at the end are critical whenever you're working on something electrical because you can get in really tight and just snip off nice and neatly. Again, these are not expensive. I got a whole bunch of them in. And a case of one of my favorite power tubes came in. Let me see if I can get it up close so you can see the label. Can you see that? Svetlana Electron Devices Inc. with the big stylized S. These are the 6550 power tube. It's a lower powered version of a KT88. They look very much like a KT88. In some amplifiers, you can use the KT88 and the 6550. In some, you can't. 
In some amplifiers, you can use the EL34 and the 6550 and not the KT88. It just depends on your amplifier. Follow your specifications for your amp because these lower power tubes are they're, they're f fairly similar in electrical um, in an electrical circuit to an EL34. So often with a simple bias switch on an amplifier, you can go from a 6550 to an EL34. That's why you'll find an amp will play um, two different use two different power tubes. Now, why would an amp use two different power tubes? Well, because of the sonic signature of the tubes. An EL34 is a very warm sounding tube, but it's a little light on the bass and it's a little light on the power, but it's a gorgeous sounding tube. Uh, KT88 type, like the 6550, has much better bass. It's got more power and it tends to have more drive. But many of the uh, many of the KT88 types have a very flat sounding mid-range. And the exception is, and the only one I've ever found, is this wonderful Svetlana. The Svet 6550Cs um, have, they're sort of a crossover tube. They have good bass, they have wonderful drive, and they have a warmer mid-range than is normal for the type. Not as warm as an EO34, but warmer. Anyways, a whole bunch of these came in the store and um, nice tight uh, quads are guaranteed as a result. And if you stay till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, I've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world and if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. And because I've, I'm now using a different method of shipping, I'm still shipping through Canada Post, but they've got a business account that, um, an online business account that allows for a better discount with tracking. Many of you will find that tracking is either free uh, to Canada and the U.S. tracking is free now, and to uh, and around the world, it's it's come down substantially in price, which should help a lot with the over overall cost of your order. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vowels and More and Melatone Kits signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>